everyone. Welcome to this, our second episode of Through the Lens. My name is Jose Mitre with Signature Films and Photography. I do video and short films. And my name is Ryan Gonzalez of Gonzalez Photography. I'm a certified professional photographer and you can find me at www.gonzalez-photography.com. So today we're gonna to show you the target and how it can be used for white balance. We're also going to show you the color checker passport and the expo disc from Expo Imaging. Check out this demo from Ryan on white balance. Everybody's under the impression that you can set your camera to auto and you're going to come up with accurate color. Sometimes you might, more times than not, you're not going to. You could set it for one of the preset white balances, cloudy, um, shade, fluorescent, daylight, so on and so forth, you may get some good color, but you're not gonna get totally accurate color. With the Expo Disc, you are. First, what you'll do is, depending on your, if you're Canon or Nikon, you're gonna set it to a custom white balance. So with Nikon, you're gonna go to Pre, which is Nikon's version of custom white balance. What you'll do is you'll push Pre until it starts to blink. Once it starts to blink, you'll put your Expo Disc on the front of the camera and take an exposure. Once you take that exposure, it's gonna say good or not good. If it's not good, usually it's because of your shutter speed. So I'm gonna take another exposure, I'm gonna look at my histogram, and it's telling me that I'm just a little bit under. So what I'll do is I'll compensate for that, and I'll go to about a 60th, which is one stop from 125, and take another exposure. That's telling me I'm just a tad over but I'm not gonna really worry about it because now then we start getting into thirds. So now we're gonna bring in our model, Alexis. Alexis, come on in. All right, Alexis, what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and stand facing the pillar, kick your leg forward, just like this, bend the front leg. What that does is it rocks your hips towards the rear, which is essentially gonna thin her out. So what you do is you bend your front leg, put your hand on your hip, and I want you to turn your face towards the camera. First, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a frame using auto white balance. Just to show you the difference between auto, pre, and cloud. Turn your face that way just a little bit more. Right there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and use cloudy because we are under an overcast sky right now. And you're gonna see that that's really, really orange. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to the, pre, the custom white balance that I had set at the beginning of this and take an exposure. Turn your face that way just a little bit, a little bit more. That way, right there. And it looks great. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and go over that again to explain how it is that we come up with a custom white balance. We've got some really warm light coming in, so this may have changed the white balance. So I'm gonna take one exposure at an 80th at F4, ISO 100 and see what that looks like. It's saying I'm over just a little bit, so I'm gonna compensate for that by increasing my shutter speed to 1 200th of a second and take another exposure. That's telling me I'm dead right in the middle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and set my, my white balance, take an exposure, it says good, we're good to go, take another one just for reference, and we're good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and change the pose on Alexis and because we have this warm light coming in, I'm gonna show you the difference. All right, Alexis, what I want you to do is I want you to stand about shoulder width apart, rock the hip towards the side, and one hand up, just like that, turn your face actually this way now because we are using the sun. Close your eyes. Right there, perfect. Close your eyes, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to count to three, and then you open it. What this does is it allows her to adjust to the light that's coming in without her squinting. So go ahead and close your eyes completely. And on three, you're gonna open it. Here we go, ready, one, two, three. And we've got an accurate exposure right there with great color. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna introduce the flash. Again, put the Expo Disc on the front of the camera and take an exposure. 
that's telling me I'm pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and set that as my white balance. Take another one. Take one for reference. And we're good to go. What I want you to do, Alexis, I want you to put your hand up on the pillar. Then you are. Let me go ahead and just, just go ahead and demonstrate it to you. Okay. Perfect. I want you to turn your face this way just to right there and just hold it. And then you'll be looking at the camera. Turn your face just a little bit more that way. There you go. There you go on three. Ready? One, two. And that gave me an accurate exposure. What I'm going to do is I'm going to compensate for the background because the background is a little bit light, darker than Alexis is. So I'm going to add a stop of light. Go ahead and get into that pose again. Turn it face this way. Perfect. Ready? One, two, three. And that is just gorgeous. What we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and go inside and I'm going to show you how to use the Expo Disc with an on-camera flash. Welcome back. We're in the studio now and what we're going to do is we're going to teach you how to take a custom white balance using your on-camera flash. It's a little different from outside because we don't have an off-camera flash to be able to fire into. So what we're doing is we're eliminating the color so what we're doing is we're eliminating the color cast from the yellow walls to give us an accurate color. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, an image of Alexis and it's just going to be using just the light that's in here on auto white balance. Okay, here we go. Nice happy smile, little one and two. Which is pretty close. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use the flash setting and we're going to take another exposure. Now that one is really yellow, really green. We have tons of reds and tons of greens. It just really pushed the histogram. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use the Expo Disc to give me accurate color in this scenario. So Lex, if you go ahead and step to the side for me. Just give me enough room to be able to fire my flash at it. At 1 one hundredth of a second at f2 at ISO 400, it's telling me I have an accurate exposure. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and switch my white balance to pre to get me that custom white balance. And it says good. Take another one just for reference. And it's telling me I've got 18% gray. Okay, Alexis, if you'll go ahead and step in there. Go ahead and just kind of bend the leg. Right there you go. And that has completely eliminated the yellow color cast. We'll take another one. Blocking the light from coming forward onto her, which normally I use a rogue flash bender for this. But for this episode, I wasn't really going to discuss that. But I just want to kind of get into it just a little bit um, to show you exactly what it looks like when you block the light from coming forward. Let's see, you'll step forward just a little bit, turn your face this way, turn your body this way, turn your face this way, and your eyes to me, head on the hip, perfect. And you'll notice in that one that we get almost studio quality light. So that concludes this episode of TTL. And what we were focusing on today was getting accurate color using the Expo Disc and your custom white balance in your camera. If you have any questions, please leave them on our Facebook fan page and we'll be more than happy to answer them. So now you should know how to use the Expo Disc from the demo that I just did. It's very important that you set your meter to a proper exposure and depending on the camera that you're using will allow you to change the custom white balance. In Canon it's different and in Nikon it's different and I'm sure that the other cameras are different as well. So just read your manual, see how to set your custom white balance and you'll have 
perfect white balance, which is always remember a subjective topic. Um, what's cooler or warmer, it all depends on the person. So now what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about the color checker. So the color checker is by a company called x -Rite. They make uh, different white balance tools as well as the um, monitor calibration software and device. Um, the way that you would use this is you would actually have your model hold it just like this and with your camera and your lights that you've already metered, take a picture of this. You want to make sure that you don't blow out the white side and you want to make sure you're not clipping the black side. That way you have detail all throughout your dynamic range. Um, the other thing with this is it allows you to have perfect color. So when you take a picture of this and then you set your color profile inside of Lightroom or Camera Raw, you're going to see that these color blocks will change. So for instance, this blue looks kind of um, desaturated and when you take it into Lightroom you'll be able to see that it becomes more vibrant. This is just a way to get your colors perfect. And the other thing we'll talk about is the target. And the target is something that everybody should be familiar with because it pretty much looks like your histogram. You have black which is zero, you have your gray which is somewhere in the 70 to 80 range, and you have white which is in the 255 range. What you do is with your camera you'll take a picture of this and you'll custom white out. And inside a camera you'll be able to see three spikes. You'll be able to see one in the blacks, you'll be able to see one in the middle which is your 18% gray range and you have a spike on the far right side which would be your 255 range. So this is another good tool to use to get your white balance correct. Okay, so when you use the target, this is uh, a device that you're going to want to use when you have a lot of time. Say for instance, uh, your seniors, your baby portraits, your family portraits, something that you're not rushed on like for instance a wedding or a quinceanera or a sweet 16. So this is something you really want to have a lot of time to do so you can get it correct. The color checker is another device that you want to use when you have a lot of time. The color checker is really useful for studio sessions because you can control the light inside of your studio. So what you would do is, just like I explained, have the model hold it right in front of them, take a picture of it, that way you get a skin tone plus the color checker, and then take it in Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw and get a custom profile you'll be able to see the difference between the skin tone and the color check. Since we're all rushed at a wedding, this is what I use at weddings. And what, I, what I'll do is I'll just put this on the camera just like it was demonstrated, get a custom white balance using the light that's available, zero out my meter, and take a picture. Once I'm happy with the white balance, then it's a running gun situation. As I demoed inside, you want to point your flash at the wall that's possibly going to be your bounce source and get that color back into your lens so that you're able to white balance and cancel out that color cast. That way your subjects look the way they're supposed to, the way we see them with our own eyes. If you have any questions, email us or just message us here on Facebook and we'll be happy to answer any question you might have regarding white balance. Thanks once again for having joined us for today's episode of Through the Lens. Uh, before we close out, I wanted to tackle a couple of questions that were submitted to our Facebook page. One of the questions submitted was, is TTL going to be a pay-per-view type of channel in the near future? Um, the answer to that is no, TTL is going to be free as long as we can provide it. And as long as people keep sending us their questions, we're really glad to get the information out there to photographers and people in the video production industry. Another question that was submitted was, if I'm in the El Paso, Texas area, can I help produce TTL? Um, the answer to that is absolutely. Make sure to hit us up on our Facebook, facebook.com slash TTLpro, and we'll get together the next time we shoot an episode. 
We plan to go hands-on on workshops and do some shoots around the city and it's going to be a really awesome time. Also on our Facebook page, um, I went ahead and offered some tips. Um, the last one that I did was how do you remember your full f-stop, shutter speed, and ISO? So take a look at that. Um, in our next episode, I'm going to be talking about the ProPhoto V1 and how it has changed the game for lighting photography, portraits, uh, any type of photography that you think of that you want to light. So we'll be talking about that next time. All right, guys. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for having joined us. I'm Jose. And I'm Ryan. And this is Through the Lens. <laughs>